So before some get it, before some get it twisted, when we're speaking about these these three pilgrim festivals in which all the males of the Beit Israel are to appear, and in the Old Testament template, as we learn, we learn about the sacrifices, the different animals, the ox and the and the lamb and the goat. But it's important for us to understand that we're in a different dispensation. That's the template there. You understand? That's what they call the type. You understand? But now. In this New Testament time, because of the Moshiach, because of Yehoshua, Jesus Christos Getachin, there are no more, you understand, animal sacrifices. So the difference between us and the other so-called Jews who call themselves Jews is they're looking actually, and this is one of the things that probably will cause a, a great conflict that is probably soon to happen concerning the whole Dome of the Rock and the Aqsa Mosque, so forth and so on in the Middle East, is that they are seeking to rebuild Solomon's temple in order to reinstitute, you understand, the, the, the sacrifices. Because now their interpretation of these areas of Scripture that we are in leads them to a different conclusion, but they have avoided certain key and revelatory areas of Scripture. But most of all, they've avoided to accept and embrace Yeshua HaMoshiach, or Jesus Christos, the true Christ, you understand the woolly haired Ethiopian Hebrew Messiah, the black Messiah, you understand, and Christ in his kingly character. In other words, they rejected, in a sense, both the Father and the Son. Now, this rejection has also brought in error into certain areas of their doctrine, of the so called white Jewish doctrine. So, here's one of the areas that we disagree, you understand, with other so called Jews or Hebrews, and this is concerning animal sacrifices. We say there is a new testament, a Buddha Hadasha sacrifice, and that's no debtors. That's no meat or to say animal flesh. No more so called blood sacrifices. Those things have been sealed up prophetically, scripturally and in reality with Yahoshua, with Yeshua, with the Moshiach with the true Messiah that many of the so-called Jews and Orthodox Jews reject. But there is a growing um, number of Jews, white Jews, Polish Jews, German and others, you understand, non-ethnic Hebrews in other words, who are beginning to reevaluate these things, are beginning to study and, and, and pray on these things, and are coming into the, the light of truth concerning Christ, concerning the Moshiach, you understand, and even many concerning Ras Tefari, concerning Keramawi, Haile Selassie, and we give thanks and praise for that. But now, when this area of scripture, Hosea 14 and 2, as we were saying in verse um, 2, where it says, Kanantagar Kalin Wusedu, it says, Take with you words. Take with you words when? During this period of time that's known as the uh, Shalosh Regali, or the three pilgrim, the three um, pilgrim festivals, right? These three pilgrim festivals, right? At these three pilgrim festivals that we know as um, the Unleavened Bread, the, the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the Feast of Weeks, and the Feast of Tabernacles, or as Pesach, Fasica, Passover, which is the first, the second as Shavuot, you understand, or Shavuot, you understand, which is the Feast of Weeks, or in the New Testament sense, it's known as Pentecoste, or Pentecost, and the third is Sukkot, you understand, which is tabernacles, or which is the ingathering, and which concludes in the fall festival and concludes the lunisolar, you understand, Hebrew yearly, the annual cycle, in other words, with, with the earth and the heavens and that clock, that, that celestial primordial uh, clockwork, God's true clock and God's true time keeping which is both loony, based on the lunar, as well as the solar, which is to say, in a sense, based on father and mother, or the solar and the lunar. And this is where the Ethiopian and the Hebrew comes together, and once again, Christ has restored us into a full family. Because in the Old Testament, the Israelites were as children with their mother only, but without the father. 
in the New Testament, we have now both father and 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 mother. You understand, and 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 brother and sister. The family now has been restored in the Moshiach and through the Moshiach. So where it says here in Hosea fourteen and two, it says, "Take with you words." And turn, return to the sustainer, return to Yahweh, return to he who is, who he is, the true and living God, to return to him. It's speaking of these three pilgrim festivals time. So therefore, we are not bringing sacrifices as though it were animals. There are still tithes and offerings and those things as part of God's economy. We have to recognize that if we don't do it for ourselves in God, we can't depend on the Gentiles or we can't depend on the Gentiles very much. And that's what's happening right now with this whole economic downturn, things that people expected because they had trust and faith in, in, in Caesar's Christ, Caesar Borgia, the white Jesus, and in their Gentile systems. But the dispensation at times of the Gentiles are coming to an end. When the Bible talks about the end of the world, the true meaning of the end of the world is the end of white supremacy on one hand, the end of Anglo-Americanism supremacy, the end of the rule of the Gentiles. You understand? And the Gentile rule has basically gone on almost ever since roughly 70 A.D. and even a little before that time. You understand? But 70 A.D. is very significant in our history. So here we're speaking about the new sacrifice, and it says, it says to take with you words, to take with us words. And it was take with us literally, not words. It doesn't say kalochin bamarinya. It says kalin. Kalin, kanan tegar kalin, not kalochin, but kalin, that means the word, the word. You understand? Know Take with you the word. Now, the word is the logos. You understand? Know saying? The word is the logos. So down on this side, when it says word, that's the word right here, the word equals the logos. And the logos, right, and the logos right here equals the sun, Right? And the son equals Yeshua. You understand? Know and Yeshua, you understand, know is revealed to us in this day in the person of Kedamawi Haile Selassie and the teaching and through the teaching of his imperial majesty. So it's important to understand what it says take with you words, not take with you oxen or take with you bulls or take with you goats, but take with you words. Take with you words. It goes on to say, and say to him, and say to him, who have appeared before him. So we say to him, take away all iniquity. Literally, Bamarinya in this sense, iniquity is interpreted in the Ethiopic, the Amharic Bible, not as amet, amet, which means, amet mean rebellion, but here as chatiyat, chatiyat, which means missing of the mark, which means sin. You understand? Which in a sense also, so you can understand this, not to be rude or crude, it means all fuckery. We say fuckery. In Rastafari, we say, oh, that, that, that Babylon deal with too much fuckery. That's sin. Or such and such, so much so, so, so fuckery. That's sin. You understand? That is sin. Fornication under the crown of the king. That is sin. You understand? So take away all effed upness. You understand? Take away all sin. Chatiyatin hulu aswagid. Remove all this. So here we apply the understanding aspect in its negative mind aspect to forget about that. For, in other words, all those sinfulness, as the Nibingi song says, the chant says, the sinfulness has been thrown into the fire of forgetfulness, which is that Manasseh aspect of our heart and our mind that through understanding, you understand, we forget or deny all that is not good. That is not on his standard. You understand? Know and we make our wills, our individual wills, and therefore collective wills, obedient to good and influences, as the King of Kings teaches, and avoid, avoid kufu, avoid evil. This is to show, the King of Kings says, the greatest, the greatest wisdom. So here it says that we say to him, take away all sin, all chatiyat. And receive us, and Kabbalah, 
The word in the Amharic is Kabbalah. It says, Bechor netim tekebalen. Tekebalen. Bechor netim and in open handedness. Char net. Bamarinya. Char mean open handedness. It means generosity. And in generosity. It's translated here in King James as graciously, but Bechornetim, and in a generous, open handed way, take a balen. In other words, don't keep, your, don't keep your hand closed. You understand? Because that's a fist right there, but in an open handed way, you understand? Take a balen. Receive us. Kabbalah us. Accept us. Receive us. And here's the key right here it says, So will we render. So will we render the calves, the calves of our lips. So will we render the calves of our lips. Now, this can also be explained hieroglyphically. We, we, we're going to hopefully have opportunity to touch on that hieroglyphically when we look at the hieroglyph for the lips, you understand, in the hieroglyph, and then understand the symbolic logic thereof. But here it says, so will we render what? What are we going to render? The calves of our lips. Bamarinya says, the wafenim fanta. In other words, instead of the castrated bullock, instead of a castrated bullock, and that's also very interesting too, the whole idea of the bull is the male aspect and, and many of the, many of the um, symbology in the Old Testament and even in ancient Egypt, the earliest scriptures, even in the earlier version of the Ethiopic Enoch, it speaks of has Adam, Adam is likened to a bull, and in Eve, Hawan is likened to a cow. You understand now in the later renditions of it, instead of the bull symbol and the cow symbol, instead it, it places Adam and Eve. So this is interesting to us because when we look at the older Ethiopic book of Enoch in the Gutters and see how it still uses this hieroglyphic symbolic logic, and the later books, even in the Amharic or the later versions of it, are more like Targum or Turgum or explanations or interpretation of the older symbology. It makes us know that the older symbology of even the Ethiopic book of Enoch, as well as the book of Little Genesis or Jubilees, as well as the book of Adam and Eve, and the symbology that's used there is very much like the symbology that we find for example, in ancient Egypt, you know what I'm saying? But there needed to be an interpretation. What was lost was the interpretation. Moses, Moshe, Moses being learned in all the wisdom of the Egypts was able to recognize the interpretation, and this is what he was able to render, you know what I'm saying, at, a, at that particular stage. Now we have the Burj Hadasha or the Adis Kidan in the New Covenant, a, a further clarity. So it's, it, it's, it's, we're growing you know what I'm saying? We're growing over these dispensations. So our study of this is really to put in context, you understand, this process, this growth, you know what I'm saying, so we can see the, the, the fullness of it. This is what I mean by study and show thyself approved. Now here it uses wafen, wafen. Now wafen, interestingly enough, wafen means a castrated bow or what they call a bullock. This is often when they say bullock. The English call it bullock. You're talking bullocks, bullocks. But a bullock is a bullock, bullock, bullock. But we will offer, instead of a, 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 castrated, a castrated bull, you understand, we will offer, it says, you can ferachnen frey in the setalen, ye ken farachnen frey in the setalen. Now that's very interesting too, that, that Amharic phraseology, because in the Gutters, His Imperial Majesty's um, speeches are known as frey kanafer. Frey kanafer. Kanafer is kenferoch, or to say lips, and frey means fruit. So we have frey fruit. Kanatha, you understand, um, from the lips or fruit of the lips. Here it says in Hosea 14 and 2, it says, Yeken farachinen frey in the setalen. And the translation is, so we will render the calves of our, of our lips. We will render the calves of our lips. And this is 
a very important area of scripture that already shows in the Old Testament, in the Nabim, or the Nabim, or what we call the Nabiyat, in the prophetical writings, in the prophetical works, the Tinbi, it's already seeing the vision, the vision. The prophets were speaking, as we know from our creed, our Ethiopic church creed, in the Ethiopic Church Creed, it says that 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 um, Christ, Jesus Christos, Yeshua Hamushi, he spoke through the Nevim, the Nabim. He spoke through the Nabiyat. Getachin Jesus Christos, he spoke through the Nabiyat. So when we're reading the prophets, we should understand that the Adoni or Adonai Yah or the Adonai Yahweh or the so-called Adonijah, is actually Jesus Christos, who is speaking through the prophets. In other words, through the Holy Spirit, you'll send to the, each of the individual prophets. So as we look through the prophetical books and study the prophetical books, we're getting what they call for, foreshadowing, or foreshadowing, you know saying, of that which is to come. And now in the Hadith Kidan, in the New Covenant, we see that being fulfilled, in our master and medicine, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christos. You understand? Excuse me. So right here is a very important word where it says, take with you. You understand? Take with you. Ka'inan tegar kalin. Kalin. Where it says right here, ka'inan tegar kalin with do with said do. Let's just emphasize that for the purpose right here. Cut and none to God with you all, with all of I and I. Word, the word, the logos. The logos, the word is the logos. The logos is the son. The son is Yeshua HaMushiach. Take, the, that's, what, that's what the Bible says in the New Testament, put on Christ. Put, put on Christ. Take with you the word. You know what I'm saying? Take with you the word. Now, it says, when it says, and we will do what? We will render the calves of our lips. You know what I'm saying? We would give, as it says in the scripture elsewhere, I think also in the Psalms, it says it much, we will, we will give the sacrifices of praise. If you go to... Um, um, what is it, uh, Corinthians, let's go to Corinthians 29, Corinthians 29 and 31, Corinthians, um, uh, 2 Corinthians 29, 2 Corinthians 29 and 21, let's see what it says in 2 Corinthians 29 and 20, 21, um, tw uh, 31, you could, uh, 31, 29 and 31, it says, um, and Hezekiah answered, and said, Now ye have consecrated yourselves to Yod Hey Wow Hey. Come near and bring sacrifices and thanksgiving into the house of the Lord. And the congregation brought sacrifice and thanksgiving, and many and as many as were of a free heart, and as many as were of a free heart burnt offerings. Now this is still a, a old Testament type, but it's interesting that the phraseology, the phraseology here is sacrifice of praise. That they brought the sacrifices of praise. The sacrifices of praise. So we keep seeing this fourth shadowing, you understand, of the true sacrifice. And even in Romans, we can add with this even Romans, just for your notes, Romans, Romans 12 and 2, you understand, which we've been teaching on, and it's very good to reflect on it, even though those of us who think we know it, oftentimes we have to, you know, read over it and study it again just to make sure that we're in right standing. It says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies, what a living sacrifice. Actually, verse 1, 1 and 2, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed, but be ye transformed 
by what? By the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good. What is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. And there's, 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 there's even more to this, the service. It says, for I say, though through the grace given to me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as God hath dealt to every man the measure, the measure of faith. For as we, I and I and I, have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office. So we, being many, are one body in Christos, or one body in the Moshi, in the Messiah. And every one members one of another, having then gifts, differing according to the grace that is given to us, where the prophecy, let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith, according to that proportion of um, faith or ministry. Let us wait on our ministering. Or he that teacheth on teaching, or he that exhorteth, exhorteth means to build up, to strengthen, on exhortation. He that giveth, let him do it with simplicity. He that ruleth with diligence. He that sheweth mercy with cheerfulness. With cheerfulness. Verse 9, let love be without dissimulation. Abhor that which is evil. Cleave to that which is good. To almost say like cleave to almost like marry that which is good. Be kindly affection one to another with what? Brotherly love. In honor preferring one another. Not slothfulness in business. Not slothfulness in business. Fervent in spirit. Serving the Adonai. Serving the Gita. Serving the Lord. Rejoicing in hope. Patient in tribulation. Continuing instant in prayer. Distributing to the necessity of the Kedusan, of those who have set aside worldly pursuits for the pursuit, you know what I'm saying, of the ministry of the kingdom of the true church of Ainai Rastafari, given to hospitality. Bless them which persecute you. Bless and curse not. And I know this very, for a lot of people who say that will make no sense. If you curse me, I'm going to curse you back. But then you get into the law of tax of lex talionis, or the law of retribution, of eye for an eye. You, you, don't, you really don't want to go there. Even uh, Martin Luther King, he had a very good word to say on that particular subject matter. But here we are taught that we are to bless them that persecute you. Bless and curse not. And we need to understand what does that mean and why we should do that and not as many people say, well, I can't agree with that. Because they're not born again. They are still dead. You understand? They are still dead in their same sinful and old, you understand, and unregenerated heart and mentality. But it says rejoice with them that rejoice and weep with them that weep. Be of the what same mind one toward another. Mind not high things, but condescend to men of low estate. Be not wise in your own conceit. Then the last part of this 12th chapter where it says the Christian and those without. In other words, we as Rastafari, how are we to act to those who are not Rastafari? Even if they're Hebrews, they may be black Hebrews, but, or they may be whatever else. How do we react to them? This is a good instruction here. It says, recompense to no man evil for evil. It's tempting, but he leads us not into temptation. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. If it be possible, as much as lieth or as much as is in you, live peaceably with all men. So we seek to live peaceably with all men as much as it is possible. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourself, yourselves, but rather give place to wrath. For it is written, it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith Adonai. I will repay. Adonai says, 
Gita says, Exil says that he will repay. Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. For in so doing, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. And as Imperial Majesty's teaching to us is, succinctly, you understand? We will fight if necessary, as we are confident in the victory of good over evil. Until the next time, Shabbat Shalom, Senbet Salam.